Morning and abduction continues in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon hit by an armed conflict. The Anglophone crisis, the people of the region continue to cry the devastating effect of the Anglophone crisis and in the northwest region of Cameroon, reports see a service head of the Center for the Demobilization and Reintegration has been kidnapped by unidentified individuals to an undisclosed destination. Meantime, the first ever on-the-ground action of the Northwest Regional Assembly has taken place in Bamenda, chief town of the region. The executive members of the Northwest Regional Assembly are committing to dedicate a bigger chunk of the budget of the Regional Assembly to bring back security to the region. Meantime, still in the region, the lifeless body of a popular lady has been found by a riverside. It is in the Donga Mountain Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon. Plus, the new police chief for Limbe of the Fako in the Southwest Region has been commanded and given the task to completely kick out Ghost Town from the city of Limbe. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining Equinox Television on the 6 p.m. primetime newscast. We are live from our central news desk in Douala, Cameroon's economic capital city, Equinox Central News Desk. We begin with the abduction of a key member of the DDR Center in the Northwest Regional Chief Tambamenda to say that online uh, media organs in Cameroon are reporting the abduction of Kum Henry. Kum Henry, the service head of the Northwest Regional Center for Demobilization and Reintegration uh, Commission, which is found in the Northwest Regional Chief Tambamenda, whose image you can see on your screen there. So, you see, he was picked up Tuesday evening from his Damukong residence of the city of Bamenda by unidentified individuals to an undisclosed destination. Kum Henry was one time provincial scribe, that is, the Secretary General of the Social Democratic Front SDF Party for the Northwest region of Cameroon before cross carpeting to the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement Party, that is, the CPT and Party, some years ago. He will later become the service head of the DDR Center in the Northwest Regional Chief Town Bamenda before his abduction by yet to be identified individuals to an undisclosed destination. Northwest Regional Administrators are yet to officially comment on his reported abduction, but it is widely reported by several online media organs in Cameroon. We are closely following this with our correspondent in the Northwest Regional Chief Town, and we'll be coming back to that subsequently. And we stay in the Northwest Region of Cameroon, where reports say a second grade inspector is, has been taken away or has taken away his own life in the Northwest uh, Regional Chief Town of Bamenda. A local online organ is reporting that the inspector uh, Kamga, Inspector Kamga, shot himself in his room at Old Town Bamenda. Equinox a reporter in uh, the Northwest uh, Chief Town of Bamenda is investigating the story. It is not certain what pushed him to commit a suicide. And rather images you see there are images of the lifeless body of a man in the of a lady a popular lady in the donga mountain divisional chief town of uh, Kambi. Uh, the images you see on your screen there according to our correspondent in that part of the northwest region the early hours of tuesday in the neighborhoods of mansor quarter and Kambi central subdivision at a riverside called uh, lalur was the lifeless body of a hawker a popular hawker of cow skin commonly called Kanda. The lady is called Ngani Ver Veronica and about 30 years old who was said to have been brutally murdered by an, unident on, an unidentified uh, individual. A young boy who is about 8 years old reportedly was washing dresses at the river Lalor when uh, she uh, saw the uh, lifeless body of Ngani Veronica along the that is beside the river thanks to the intervention of bike riders and the president who then uh, took individuals and vital information to administrators and the security officials of the area. The senior divisional officer for the Donga Mantung uh, Division 
and his uh, state council, as well as the police head and gendarmerie head, descended to the scene together with other key uh, officials and collaborators with onlookers where the body of uh, the popular lady Ngani Veronica was finally taken uh, to the Nkambe District Hospital Mortuary. This joint divisional officer on his part has promised that a key investigation will be launched to understand who is behind the untimely death of the lady. And just shortly after that, a correspondent spoke to the senior divisional officer who uh, was talking to the population in uh, this extract translated from Pidgin to English. Human wickedness. And we here in Donga Mantum, we believe say God day. When man kill another one, he will live forever. This is man's wickedness. And we in Donga Mantum, believe in the existence of God. Those who kill will not live forever. God know the responsible and will pay them accordingly. However, we have also decided to prohibit the movement of civilians beyond 10 p.m. Those are unholy house and only the forces of law and order are allowed to move around beyond 10 p.m. You people, you should go home and allow the forces of law and order to do what they should do in this case. Okay, so when I don't see him, when I go back, but make any man take care of himself, and he report for forces. He report as quickly as possible for forces, any of such cases. And the key information regarding the reported kidnap of the service head of the DDR Center of the Northwest Region of Cameroon has been confirmed by our correspondent in the city of Bamenda, who says she has uh, been on phone or she has been trying to get to the coordinator of the center to no avail. She is in Bamenda and confirms that it is true the man Henry Kum was taken away from his Ndamukong residence uh, by unidentified individuals but highly suspected to be separatist fighters to an undisclosed destination. We are closely following up that and we'll be coming back to that. And the officials of the Northwest Regional Assembly have had their first on the ground activity in Bamenda during a meeting they committed to dedicate a bigger portion of the budget for the institution to bring back security to the conflict stricken region. Mbustela tells us more in the following report. Since the putting in place of the Regional Assembly for the Northwest Region, work is yet to effectively commence due to no budget, among other constraints. It is against this backdrop that an interministerial delegation made up of experts from the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development, and the Ministry of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development are in Bamenda for a two days workshop aimed at assisting the Regional Assembly prepare their first program budget. The major objectives of this seminar is for us to be able to come up with a base budget approach, meaning we need to move away from the normal idea of the budget, then we move to a budget-based approach we take into consideration, Planification, which takes into consideration the different actions, which takes into consideration the activities, right up to the awaited results. The budget is expected to enable the Assembly better execute their mapped out action plan with peace building as the most essential. The region has uh, specificities. One of the problems that is at the fore is the crisis. So we have to see what part of the budget will go for peace building, which will probably be in the fourth program within our structured budget. In his opening address, Adolf Lili Lafrik sitting in as the representative of the state cautioned the participants to take ownership of the procedures in order to meet the expectations of the Northwest man. 
on the streets of Bamenda, the common man wants to see the realities of the spacious statues for the Northwest and Southwest regions arrived at during the major national dialogue. Mbustela reporting the end traders of Granganga, Rail and Bonasama market of Bonaberry in the Douala for subdivision have scrambled over face masks distributed by Isa Dauda, who is the divisional officer for the Douala for subdivision. To the administrator, it is important to re echo the reality of uh, COVID 19 or the real existence of COVID 19 to traders, traders, a category of people whom, according to him, are most vulnerable vis a vis the contamination of COVID-19. More with Innocenase. Like school children lined up to receive puff paw for Swiss. Traders in the Grand Hangar, Rai and Bonasama Marquis in Bonaberry told the line, scrambling over face masks being distributed by Isa Dauda, Divisional Officer for Dweller Force Subdivision. They might not have been putting on the face mask, but desperately needed it, probably free of charge. At least, a clear indication they are aware the coronavirus still lives and will. A gesture they all hail. This coronavirus is a call for concern. Les gens ne croient pas, mais il y a ça dehors. Je lui dis merci beaucoup. He don't give a cash net for market. Now we all will be glad. <laughs> merci de nous encourager. Merci. Merci, merci, le vous le faire. Others might not have received a face mask, but at least got a cube of soap to wash hands. Je vous remercie beaucoup. J'ai même tendu la main sur le cash net. Je n'ai pas eu, mais j'ai mes cash net. Lavez le main avec tout ma famille. Là, merci, monsieur le maire. Apart from distributing the face mask, soap and installation of hand washing buckets in the various markets the divisional officer preached on the need to rush to hospitals for a covid 19 test should anyone suspect symptoms it is better to be tested early than late for those who ignore existence of the coronavirus, he reiterates. Run quickly to the hospital when they hear a pain on their body. This is the message that I've come, I have come today to share. This operation, deemed very imperative by the divisional officer, is expected to intensify as markets remain delicate places should there very exist a case. And still in COVID-19 related information, President Paul Bia has ordered a proper auditing of the money dedicated to the fight against COVID-19 given to the government of Cameroon by the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. The information was made on that is was made public following a document circulating in social on social media in Cameroon. The information says an audit should be done scrupulously to understand how the money was spent in the campaign against COVID-19. It is widely followed by Cameroonians who think that health might just roll even after the auditing. Some Cameroonians have gone as far as saying that people who are charged with using the money given to Cameroon by IMF to fight COVID-19 are potential candidates to the uh, Kondenge prison, that is the Yaoundé Central Prison, in the Kondenge neighborhoods of the political capital city of Cameroon. And now we talk something else, best thing in Yaoundé to say that some three suspected producers of uh, fake identity cards have been uh, intercepted by elements of uh, the feed district police unit of Yaoundé. The arrest was out done after an individual who was caught with fake identity card took them to those believed to be behind the producing of fake ID cards. Details with Simat Njikan Gabriel. Printers, laptops, cameras, stamps of top officials in the country were some of the items discovered at a residence in Yaoundé after a search done by police officers from the 5th district. The accused are involved in the production of fake identification cards.
It all began on the night of 3rd breaking foot April 2021 when this gentleman was arrested. During our normal patrol, our team saw a suspect at the CSU neighborhood. It was past midnight, so we arrested him. It was midnight, so his presence was suspected in this place that led to his interpellation. At the level of identifying the man, the police discovered he was in possession of a fake identity card receipt. Looking at his identity card receipt, we discovered that his receipt was delivered on April 5th, 2021, but we were still on the 3rd, breaking the foot of April. It is there that he confessed about the man who gave him the identity card receipt in the person of Kyutu Aliu. On l'a donc exploité. Il nous a fait comprendre que c'est we interrogated him, then he told us it was a friend who gave him the receipt since he posed a problem and the latter gave him the receipt of the identity card. He then took us to the third person. Qui avait également un récipicé faux. Quand on l'a également interrogé et exploité ce deuxième, il nous a donc conduit vers le troisième. The arrest of Aliou led to the capture of a third person who was the main man behind the production of the fake documents. The security forces put this advice to the population. The population should go to the right places to do their documents and stay away from trouble. The persons arrested are expected to be presented to the state council in the days ahead. The new Limbe police bust has been charged to completely eradicate ghost town, a phenomenon that has been common in major towns and cities in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon since the escalation of the Anglophone crisis. The key message and command to the Limbe police boss came from the southwest regional delegate of uh, the national security during his installation the installation of the police bus in Limbe. Davison Mamo tells us more from the seaside resort city of Limbe. Monday, the 5th of April 2021, the seaside resort city of Limbe, business activities were partially shut down. Urban and inter-urban transportation paralyzed as it was a traditional ghost town day, better known as Country Sunday, activated by the ongoing armed conflict in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon. The influx of internally displaced persons into Limbe, a safe haven within the context of the ongoing crisis, has drastically increased crime waves within the city. These and more are some of the vices the newly installed six-star commissioner to Limbe Central Police, Aibi Simon Jean-Pierre, has to deal with as was instructed by Southwest Police Boss, Ndinga Jean Marie. The fight against the phenomenon of death city decree every Monday by the terrorist secessionist. The fight without mercy against terrorist secessionist terrorists and criminals of all strike with a view to maintaining the climate of peace that reigns in this city without fail. The regional police boss reminded him to work in synergy with related defense and security unit, not leaving out the administration in achieving his mission. With all the active force in your area of command, collaboration with the administrative, municipal, religious and traditional authority, who should help you through intelligence to make your action on the ground effective. Given the strategic nature of Limbe to the government of Cameroon, the new Limbe Central Police Boss, Ayibi Simon Jean Pierre, says his primary mission is to protect lives and property. And you, ha you know that uh, Limbe is a, a strategic uh, uh, town for our country. I have come to mobilize the troops here. We have to ensure the security of people. And their property. He called on the population to collaborate with the police.
to gain total security of the city. The collaboration with the population is necessary because those acts of terrorism affect all the population, not only the, the state administration. So those people who are affected, we need them to work with them to resolve this problem. Before his appointment to Limbe, he was head of the continuous training department at the police headquarters in Yaoundé. He replaces six-star commissioner Do Marcel Aristil, appointed in same capacity at Douala 3 City Central Police. The ceremony was attended among others. The senior divisional officer for FACO, local administration, judicial, heads of related defense and security unit, and the population. And on our foreign news page, we take you to the Federal Republic of Nigeria where fighting has been ongoing in the country's northern parts, as well as the fighting between the forces loyal to the government of Ethiopia in Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa and forces loyal to rebels in the Tigray region of the country. Charles Ekome tells us more in the following international news roundup. Dozens of people have been killed during several days of clashes on the border between Ethiopia's Afar and Somali regions. Homes have been set on fire in villages on contested land as each regional state in Ethiopia has its own police force now. Officials in Afar accused the Somali special forces of killing 30 people on Saturday. The authorities in the Somali regions say at least 25 livestock farmers were killed by gunmen who came in from over the state border in Afar. It is not clear how many people were killed in the latest revenge attack which took place earlier on Tuesday. The reports confirm that elections due in June have led to increased tensions over the disputed border areas. In Nigeria, gunmen attacked and set ablaze a police station in the southeastern part of the country. I was after Vice President Yemi Osinbanjo's visit to assess the damage from an earlier raid. Professor Osinbanjo had earlier visited the area to assess the damage from Monday's attack on a prison in Imo State's capital, Oweri. The attack on the police station recorded no casualties and no lives were lost, but three vehicles were burnt in the attack. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up is Talking Point. Stay with us. On Talking Points today, we'll be receiving two political figures in Cameroon. First, to start with the person in the nation's political capital city, Yaoundé. We shall be having on the line to Yaoundé, Incha Roland Moa. He is the national president of the UCPP political party, founder of the One Cameroon Project, and president of the anti-separatist agency in Cameroon. He's also a journalist with a bi-weekly newspaper and an online TV or project that is a project of the One Cameroon uh, Movement, a political uh, personality in Cameroon. Moa uh, Roland, thanks for joining us from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Uh, uh, we... We are receiving. We are receiving you for the first time since the launch of your uh, political party, that is the UCPP political party, and it's, it is also important to note that you launch you launch your political party within the uh, context or at the peak of the Anglophone crisis. What inspired you to bring your political party at a time when the political climate in Cameroon was not the best? Noting the, that you are an, you are an Anglophone. Oh, 
and of course uh, the connection with the nation's political capitals it is not the best we show we'll be getting to him as i indicated we're also having another political figure a uh, popular one too in uh, cameroon uh tanfo jones uh you are uh, welcome thanks for accepting our invitation thank you so much mr for me it uh, was a pleasure and an honor to come here and share my view to know that you are a secretary general of M modegna political party absolutely and uh, we are fighting so hard to see that this nation moves forward and be what it is supposed to be given that so many lapses have caused us to be where we are today with the crisis in the north and the south that have taken over four to get into five years of our time that we have been using to build this nation i think it is something that we really need to come together put our energies together to see to eat that peace returns in the, the two uh, English speaking regions. Tafo Jones, you have the Modegna political party. We just had somebody with a political party recently launched. Some Cameroonians are blaming the, uh, the, the, the many political, the existence of so many political parties in Cameroon for what Cameroon is facing today, be the crisis in the two anglophone regions and the post-electoral crisis with the tense atmosphere, political and social, that the country is facing. Yes, uh, political parties are being blamed, but we cannot uh, blame political parties because majority of them are doing what they should do to see into it that the country moves forward, especially in Modegna. We have been working so hard to see that things in Cameroon should be the way they are supposed to be. But we cannot also deny the fact that they are satellite political parties, which means that they are working for the system. They are being sponsored and created by the system to make sure that they push their agenda right to the end. Excluding your Modegna? Excluding Modegna. Modegna has never been and will never be a satellite party in this nation. We are fighting for the good of Cameroon and not to, for the status quo to be maintained. What, what do you mean by satellite political party? Satellite political party, a party that uh, is being created by member of the ruling party to distract the opposition or the, which of the parties terrain. for example I would not be calling names here you know calling names will be very dangerous for those parties but we work in the field and we know them and we know their agenda these are people that when you say that they, they should boycott the elections because of what is going on in the north and the southwest they will kick against they will say that no boycott they will they are ready to go in for the election even when they know that the electoral code is not so uh, favorable it's not so a uh, fashion in the way that it gives opportunity to the political parties of the opposition to also have equal uh, stance as in when it comes to political uh, battle on the field Okay, and now we go back to our national president of a political party. He is in Yaoundé. And um, Marulan, are you okay with Tanfo Jews that there are satellite political parties in Cameroon created by members of the ruling CPTM to destabilize the opposition? And if yes, is your party one of such parties? The UCPP is a party created by the government people because they exhausted all their political agenda. That is why we have created a party to bring change to the ballot box and, you know, to remove a regime which has stayed in power for close to 40 years, who have been able uh, not to deliver the goods to Cameroon. So I think we are coming with a lot of force with 6 million plus members to fight the presidency through the ballot box. And I believe that we are going to win the elections because we have already 1.5 million registered at the late camp list. And we believe that uh, uh, the UCPP is a party for all Cameroonians. It is a party for the youth because we believe that the CPDM party has paid us and the civilian party is no more a political party. It is a government mechanism made, you know, to do government. So this is the party which is created to bring change to the ballot box. So we are calling on all Cameroonians to rally behind the UCPP, especially the civilian fighters who are in the bushes, drop their weapons and come out in the bushes and join us to fight through the ballot box. Because I think the gun is not a solution. Mwaru Lancha, you are talking about uh, a party that you think, your party that you think will be taking over the presidency of Cameroon, for example, and at the same time you are presenting as a, uh, it as, as a party to stand for the Anglophones. If it is that party that is only there for the Anglophones, are the Anglophones to vote you as a political party? Considering the numbers in politics, will you be able to get to it with the votes from the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon? The, the Anglophones have been marginalized. Uh, the Anglophones, that is Cameroonians of English expression, have been, have been marginalized. So there's no way to take by the national cake. It is only through the ballot box. Because I think uh, the UCP is a party for all Cameroonians. But it is a party to bring change and, you know, to bring uh, in, uh, equality in the share of the national cake. Because the national cake has not been properly shared. That is why we have the issues in the north of the country. I have the issues in the northwest and south region. So that's but why I'm calling on all Cameroonians in general and Anglophones in particular 
rally behind a party that is meant for change. But you your personality, Mwaru Lancha, your personality matters here also. You are uh, the one of the founders, we we'll say the founders of the anti-separatist agency. That is, you are fighting those uh, known or said to be separatists who are believed to be Cameroonians, your Anglophone brothers and sisters. You are also determined in fighting them and at the same time saying you are presenting yourself as the president of a party that will be the one to liberate the Anglophones from marginalization. Yes, uh, you know, uh, uh, in my capacity as a national unity activist, I fight what is uh, against our national unity because separation is not the best option for Cameroon. You know, together we can build a better Cameroon despite the difficulties. So I'm calling on them to understand that uh, separation is not possible because we have a bigger plan to make one strong and indivisible Cameroon for the benefit of all Cameroonians. So separation is out of topic. So we are we have to work together from all over the 10 regions and 50 divisions and 360 municipalities and Cameroonians of goodwill in the diaspora to come together and fight for our fatherland. We have just one country. So uh, that's why we hate separatists because they are spoiling the game of national unity. They are spoiling the game of prosperity because they are killing innocent people. And that's why they are anti-unity agents. So that's why we want to stop them and encourage them through education that the gun cannot help them and that the diaspora has lied to them for close to four years now. On, on most of your, your, your online outings, you have dedicated more energy in fighting the separatists than presenting the Anglophone cause. Uh, is that not controversial? Is that not controversial to what you, you're presenting now as the agenda of your political party? And of course, we shall be coming back to him. Um, we're talking to another leader of a political party who is said to... Uh, be presenting his party as that which will liberate Anglophones. Yeah, you know, uh, he is the only one who has the, how can I call it, the agenda of his party. He knows what he wants and he knows what he's looking for. But we, as a people of Modekna and Cameroonians, we want a Cameroon that will be prosperous because... We'll but now, you, 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 you are a critical thinker and a politician. Have, do you find something contradictory in what Moir Roland says and does and presents as the agenda of his political party. Well, yeah, when he talks, I am tempted to think that uh, he, he is surprised of the, of the political terrain, given that uh, he is fighting many battles at the same time and is not consistent in his fighting. Because if you come out that you want to fight the separatists, and at the same time you are saying that you are fighting for the Anglophones to have a better share of the national kick, because when we look critically of this, when we look critically at this Anglophone crisis, we realize that it was not a problem of living together that brought us to where we are today. It has ever been the problem of eating together, which uh, Mr. Patrick is talking about it, and I am okay with him. But now the question is this. If you say that you want to fight for the well-being of the Anglophones and you are this, at the same time fighting the separatists, now can you distinguish between the Anglophones and the separatists? It becomes very difficult given that the way the government has taken to solve this problem has turned so many Anglophones to sympathize with the separatists. Ask me why I will tell you that if up till date the population of the Norwest and the Southwest are unable to collaborate with the government, with the forces in place. It means that in somehow they are covering the voices who are in the bushes. If not, they will deliver the voices because those guys don't come from mass. There are people who live in those cities and are well known by those who live there. So I think that the with, way... With surprising reports like we having a key official abducted in the heart of Bamenda. Ndamukong is not that remote. Ndamukong is not remote in the hearts of Bameda with all the security forces present. So you see that it becomes very delicate to uh, cut a clear cut between the separatists and the Anglophones. Now the situation is very delicate. If something should take place in this country concerning politics, who should go to a 2 and who should not go? We believe in Modegna that let the political terrain be serene. It should be quiet. Peace should reign. Because without peace, Effective politics can never take place. Even though people will tell you that hey, hey, it has it happened elsewhere. Elsewhere is not Cameroon. Now, if you want to take what is happening elsewhere and you bring in Cameroon, then you are trying to fit a square peg in a round hole because that elsewhere they don't have 360 political parties. So here Mo in Cameroon is a different case. Moderna longs for peace in Cameroon wants uh, a proper share of the national cake and resources to be distributed uh, uh, that is just equally. Yes. equally. Now, at the same time, you 
you are part of those political parties who has consistently been on on the agenda of boycotting elections yes and we, we, and political scientists argue that boycotting has never been productive in politics rather counterproductive counterproductive we must we always sit on these theories that it has never it has never times start changing and things should change with time we, we didn't have the anglophone crisis uh, uh, getting up to this level if it is getting up to this level i think that there are some measures that we should put in place to see into it that we counter or fight the, this uh, agenda of the men that we don't know because from now as we speak we don't even know who is behind the anglophone crisis now the question is what should we do to make sure that there is peace in cameroon because somebody uh, Ch mr Chan said that the guns have never been the solution but when these people took peace plan to the street, what, what, what was their response? Guns. And you cannot fight, you cannot try to tell somebody that don't pick a gun and you pick the gun against the person. You teach a child how to handle a gun and you will fall back and complain that why is the child being stubborn? Jules, we, we, are, we are looking at a Cameroon really divided in opinion. We, we, we are actually having people, even of the opposition like you, being targeted, at least with insults and threats, from those fully radicalized in the northwest and southwest regions. We also having you with challenges with the ruling opposition party and now the division within the opposition. Yeah, you How do you get to reconcile these voices and the change of power it, at the helm of Cameroon? It becomes very complicated because when you talk about targeting, it is everywhere. From the people who are extremists, they target you. Some who think that patriotism is all about uh, agreeing or not uh, disagreeing with a, poli a, part a particular political party. When you agree with that political party, you are a patriot. When you disagree with them, you are an unpatriotic Cameroonian. So you see that it becomes so complicated. And with the bosses, when you say something that is against them, you become a black leg. I, but meanwhile, what we are seeing is maybe a way forward. But we have two estimate parties who are fighting, and to bring them together becomes very difficult. Now, we in Moderna propose that a dialogue a genuine dialogue should be organized where there will be no taboo and everything should be discussed so that differences look at somebody like the uh, late Cardinal Tume who just died who had fought so that the Cameroonians can come together and discuss their differences and then there is nothing because no matter how long these bullets fly they will these two parties will end up on the table on the discussion table so why should we waste much time and then destroy waste too much lives so many lives let's go to the table now discuss the differences if we believe that we are truthful about what we preach in this in this context in this fight of tigers is the opposition helpless the opposition is helpless because they don't even have the means to even what, what say means their are voice. you talking about for example the financial even financial financial because when, when we talk today if you have to go to a place like norway it, it, it requires a lot because when you look at those who go there, you need a body, uh, you need a, a security agent to be by you to get you. Because you go there like that, you, my brother, you don't know who is targeting you there. Because now there's so much disorder in that in, in the northwest and the southwest that anybody can tag you whatsoever before they know it. If they before they know who you are, you must have been killed, and that is a life that is wasted. So people are very careful. Those who have the abilities to go there with ammo cars, they they, 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 are, they are doing it. But some of us in the opposition, well, how will I manage to get an ammo car at my disposal? It is impossible. So you see that it becomes very difficult. Even if I had the will to go or the means to go there and talk to those boys, how am I going to get to them? It's going to be very difficult. It becomes very difficult because the opposition in Cameroon have been, uh, been fashioned in such a way that they become beggars. So that at the end of the day, when you look left, you look right, there's no way you can lay your hands on. You now look up to the system like a god so that they can give you appointment and you go to your window and you start uh, speaking the other language. What stops from the opposition from coming up with a one and stronger voice? It, what stops the opposition from coming up with a one and stronger voice is that there are satellite parties among the, in the opposition. I call them distractors. They distract the opposition. Immediately you start saying that opposition parties should come together and speak with one voice. These dictators will tell you that they will not come together. And when they don't come together, because if in 2018 the opposition parties came together to send one candidate, I think they would have had a better result. Or even coming together to boycott 
that no opposition party takes part in that election, the international community is going to see that they, there is something wrong in the country whereby the opposition says that no, they are not going for elections because people are being killed in the north and the southwest. And you, when you look at it, you realize that the north and the southwest is the fear of opposition in Cameroon. If Cameroon, the opposition in Cameroon is present in five regions in Cameroon, because that's what the statistics show, that opposition is, is present completely in five regions in Cameroon. If two regions out of the five regions in Cameroon are down, you cannot go there to, for campaign because why you don't go there for campaign obviously we have Jews, we have SGOs, we have the military men and the government workers who are there who will vote for the party in power now you of the opposition who cannot go there you have already lost those two regions and now you are working on three regions there is no hope when you work on three regions out of uh, uh, ten in, in the nation like Cameroon because you are working on a minus, uh, how can I say, minus seven. All right, uh, June, finally, before we, we leave this place, there is reports, or there are reports of uh, people uh, being hampered or information, threatening people from going into and out of the northwest region through some stretches. And when you analyze that, you feel like what pains, the pains of the people of the northwest regions of Cameroon, where is it coming from most? And how can it be redeemed in the nearest future before a long run uh, solution that you are talking about? I pity this population that is helpless. Because now it is rumored that the entrance or movement out of the region is prohibited. The people are in the middle because at a given point in time when you go there, they complain that the men in uniform also don't make life easy for them there. There are too much road controls. You leave from a uh, commercial avenue to Bambili, you have about eight road controls. The police co miscontrols, and the, at, at each control, a, the taxi drivers are uh, obliged to give to settle the control at least with a thousand francs. It means that on the journey you have to spend about eight thousand francs to go to Bambili. You see that the population now are now faced with the, the increment in transport fare, and life becomes very difficult. On the other side, somebody will sit somewhere and write a note and send on social media that people should not move from the northwest or into the northwest region. Meanwhile, we know that food is coming from that area, and there are business people who have to come and buy out of the northwest and then take it back to the northwest life become very difficult i think that for these people to start enjoying life as they used to peace should come back to the place the and the government and the government know what to do to make sure that peace returns in the northwest and the southwest thank you very much uh Tampo jones for me you are the secretary general of the moderna political party we also extend our thanks to uh Ncha roland Moi, who is uh, the national president of the UCPP political party. He was on the line to the nation's political capital city, Yaoundé. Ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful that you have stayed with us. Stay in the company of interesting programs on Equinox Television.